the idea was really just to um see if there's any burning questions around the track lead process. No. I'm going to share real quick on the subject of swag. The swag store just uh, went live with some amazing designs by uh, Ash Sullivan, who works on a lot of the Dries Note artwork and slide decks for keynotes and did these amazing posters. So speaking of swag, <laughs> there's some really cool. $30 stuff. for one. Yeah. And you can order them unframed. That's $30. Or you can actually order them framed, which I don't know how much that is, but yep. probably at least double, <laughs> if not with, more. With proceeds to support the DA and go into the Starshot Innovation Fund. Oh, yeah, pretty cool. All right, as we wait for uh, more people, I will address the elephant in the room, which is what happened to your hair? <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't, know. I don't know. I have a hair crisis, and uh, I was on vacation last week, swimming in lakes, and uh, you know, didn't have basically gel in my hair because I went swimming, and there was a unsolicited, unwanted family vote. <laughs> Or basically, my family kindly suggested I do not wear gel going forward. And uh, so I've worn gel, and now I've been gel less for a couple of days. Uh, Leah, oh, who's on the call, she likes it better too. You're having an identity uh, crisis, Teresa. Oh. I know. I know. My whole brand is collapsing after <laughs> 20 plus years of wearing gel every day. Um, so I don't know. I'm undecided. <clears throat> you can uh, you can provide me feedback in email if you want. <laughs> I'm not asking for feedback, but if you really want to, you can. Uh, but it's funny. I've been on a lot of calls, and often people are too modest to say something. But then the people that I work very closely with have all sorts of panic reactions. I've seen, you know. <laughs> So anyhow, oh, what what was the question about my beard? <laughs> well, it popped by, but start, I didn't. It's a, it's a ask me anything, right? So we can start uh, to that question. Sure. Yeah. Will the beard uh, continue and the beard? stay and yeah. get longer? It's a good question. I've not thought about Put my beard. The gel in the beard instead. <laughs> or the other way. Yeah. I think it needs to be a little longer, but <laughs> I can grow out my beard. I don't know whether it's the beard or the holiday or the gel, but you look younger, Drees. You know what? It's probably the hair. I am young. No, no. I'm 45. Not that young anymore. But anyway, that's the elephant in the room. I'm sure there was at least two or three people wondering. Um, But yeah. So the goal of this... um. I'm just going to get going <laughs> instead of talking about my hair. Uh, but the goal of this session is to see if there's any questions for people around the tracks. Uh, so you may have seen that um, we posted a call for track leads um, that was posted on my blog, that was posted on Drupal.org. Uh, we've already received quite a few submissions. Uh, and basically, what we've done is we've been working on Starshot, and we've been sort of decomposing. I, I don't know if that's the right word in English, but like we've been deconstructing it or taking it apart in smaller chunks based on a product strategy that we have been working on. We have not published the product strategy. Um, we, we hope to do that in the next week or two weeks. Um, and so we already decided to like, all right, we know we need these kinds of building blocks, which we've called tracks. And we have uh, been recruiting track leads. So people that would essentially take ownership of the track. Um, we have not posted all the tracks, by the way. Um, there's going to be more tracks added later as well. Um, but I think for now we have maybe 15 or so. I forgot the exact number, but it's uh, a handful of tracks. Um, and, um, 
Yeah, the idea of a track lead is essentially somebody that would, or somebody, a company, could even be a group of people, uh, that would essentially, you know, lead the track, right? And so that means a number of things. It, it actually includes helping to define the requirements uh, to ensure that the tracks meet uh, the expectations of the target audience. So, for example, um, one of the tracks is events, like to add events capability to Starshot. Well, there's a lot of questions there, right? Do we want to support multi-day events? Um, do we want to um, support digital events only? Do we want to support events that have a physical location? Like anyway, all kinds of small and large requirements <laughs> could be uh, defined around these tracks and we want help defining those. So we're looking for uh, people that are eager to do that. Um, and then you need to sort of, you know, figure out the plan, I guess, uh, for the, the track and the, the different milestones or aspects of the track, and then also oversee the implementation. Like the track lead could be a developer, but it doesn't have to be a developer. Um, so it could, it could be helping to drive other people to develop it. And then there's also an element of collaborating with the Starshot leadership team as well. Uh, so because the Starshot leadership team, we have myself as a product manager, we have a UX person in Christina, we have a technical leader in Tim Plunkett. And so we obviously want to make sure that whatever the track leads um, want to do, that things are consistent from a UX point of view or a technical point of view, like that we don't have competing uh, modules or something uh, in the you know, in the different tracks where it doesn't make sense. And then you should expect maybe the UX team to provide UX feedback so that we build a consistent uh, look and feel. And then an element is also some communication. You know, we need to be able to report on some of the progress uh, as well. So um, so we, we posted the, um, the call for track leads about a week ago, I would say. Um, I was on vacation. <laughs> Uh, when I posted it, um, and it closes next, uh, is it, I think Thursday, July 31st. So we have about a week or so left for people to submit. And again, there will be more tracks in the future. So if you don't, are not ready to commit now, <laughs> or you didn't get selected, there will be more tracks in the future. Uh, and then next week, the leadership team, along with some key members of the Drupal Association, we will look at all the track leads, um, candidacies and then make a select the final track leads and announce them hopefully shortly after i i suspect um sort of the week of august 5th i think it is um so that's a little bit the process i don't know if there's any kind of questions that you may have or comments and dallas plus one for a starshot background yeah thank you um I'll kick it off with a question if, sure. uh, if the floor is open. Mm -hmm. um, so cool. So I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of the promote Drupal side of things and, and, mm -hmm. and the marketing side of things. Um, and I'm, I'm very aware that in the next few months, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of just awesome collabor you know, collaboration that's going to happen between us. And um, I'm really curious how I can help promote just just the the teamwork and the the collaboration that's going to occur here and how can we you know like amplify just the the coolness of your guys's work um yeah. you know you know in particular the conversations that are happening on slack um you know um, how, i wonder how we can capture that the, those that creativity and that collaboration and how can we spread the message saying hey look you know cool things are happening over here in drupal land um, so I just want to get your thoughts and maybe the thoughts yeah. of others on how, uh, how we can promote ourselves. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, not, I haven't thought about it, to be honest, but somebody else actually just suggested the same thing yesterday as well. Um, and um, I've I've been so busy um, and the other Starshot members as well, like just getting sort of the plane of the ground that we haven't always had the time to kind of communicate uh, a lot of the things that have been happening. Um, so definitely would welcome help, first of all. Um, the best way how to do that, I'm not sure. Um, 
I don't even know if you need to work with the marketing committee on that. You certainly can, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, don't feel like that is a, a must, you know what I mean? I, think I don't know if that's a real dependency. Let Maybe that's up. another track. Yeah, promotion the track. track. Yeah. The promotion of Starshot. Uh, yeah. the, the community of, you know, doing the work. I agree. Yeah. And we're, I, I would say like, for, I, I'm pretty sure people on the leadership team and maybe the advisory board, the Kristen is a Kristen is a part of as well. Like I'm sure we're happy to um, fact check or something if you feel like, oh, is this true or not true? <laughs> like you can definitely run things by us. Um, You've been making sure some cool accurate. videos and things, Dallas, and I wonder if you know yeah. uh, we could we could snip out reels and TikTok length things out of these meetings, the past history of webinars. I think once the track leads are announced, like the and the leadership team announcement already went out, I bet some people would be open to doing like a little short social interview or something about like, hey, here's what we're up to. There, are, everybody's going to have to protect time a little bit right now, just because we're so busy. But I imagine a few folks will be able to take a little time out of their day, and that might be that might be a good way to sort of just mm -hmm. more informally. Um, touch base and see if we can generate some some cool stuff to get everybody else excited because so i agree with you we want that enthusiasm to be infectious and and get everybody uh really feeling it yeah so we so one thing that we did so we could create a track for it potentially um but like we've also like we announced an initial leadership team for starshot and um we haven't announced this yet <laughs> Uh, but we're basically adding Suzanne to the leadership team as a marketing uh, lead for Starshot. And that's kind of a day-to-day -day role, if you will. She's been in daily meetings, I would say, um, with the leadership team. And maybe we need a communications kind of role as well. Because Suzanne, she's been doing amazing work, but it's been very focused on sort of the, the, the product marketing site, the messaging the naming of Starshot, these kinds of things, and hasn't been sort of communication. Um, so I do agree, like weekly updates would be good. Um, so let me let me discuss this with the others um, on the Starshot team on how we can best do that. And I'll pencil, I'll I'll write down your name, Dallas, as a somebody that's raised his hands for contributing or potentially leading some of these efforts. Cool. Thank you. No Thank pressure. You can always <laughs> change your mind. <laughs> I love it. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Other thoughts, uh, Barry? You have your yeah, I have. I have two questions. Okay. So, question number one is like, if you are a track lead, um, and I'm thinking about things like, for example, the SEO track. Mm -hmm. the, um, obviously, like it depends a lot on the structure on the articles or the news and the events like how actually you are going to compose the the meta tags and the schemas and so on mm -hmm. um how do you see collaboration that's that's question number one like how will the collaboration between the track leads happen because i assume that they need to also collaborate or is it going to be top down with the leadership team like how is the structure going to be for the track leads per se that's question yeah, we... number one mm -hmm. yeah you can, you can answer that now yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the short answer is we don't know yet, and it's something that we're going to discuss with the track leads. Um, so we have a few track leads already. Matt Clement is working on the trial experience. Uh, Suzanne is working on a product marketing track. Uh, Martin Anderson uh, Kludz is working on event management. What we've been doing so far is like the leadership team has been meeting with them individually. We've had a couple of meetings if you with them, and we've been kind of you know, steering them and they've been steering us and it's that's been good. Sort of like kickoff meetings, if you want to think about it. But yeah, we recognize that we need to have some kind of forum or mechanism to collaborate in a more scalable way, especially if we're going to have 15 track leads at some point or more even. We, we haven't quite figured that out yet. We've talked about the needs, just like you identified the needs. But we also felt like maybe it's something that we discuss with the track lead. So we, we've we talked about having, if we announce the track leads like in early August, maybe we'll have some kind of kickoff call with the track leads. because so we want to show them more of the strategy, 
we created a script of a demo that we want to provide at DrupalCon Barcelona. So I want to show them the script. So that, like, you know, I hope hoping we can all work together towards the same kind of milestone. And we have milestones for Barcelona, not just the script of the demo. And then also discuss how we might work together best. So okay. maybe and there's yeah. thank you. Like I think that's uh and, and I think like it came also in the comments, like it's not just SEO, it's also accessibility, it's the multilingual tracks. It's a little bit about like if I take leadership here, um I don't wanna like I wanna be make sure that that I can do my job because yeah. I need to probably collaborate with the others as well. So that's like a Yeah. But we see it as our job on the Starship leadership team to enable that collaboration and to enable the alignment between uh you know, different tracks, not just the track leads, but, you know, alignment on UX, on technical decisions, on um, marketing decisions, or maybe language decisions in the product, these kinds of things. So Which we're open to, to ideas. Yeah. So. so, okay, perfect. So like the second question that I have, and then mm -hmm. I'm finished with mine. Yeah. Um, it was regarding the theme. Um, I, Is it correct that Olivero will be used as a theme to start with for those recipes or like, because I assume that like articles and events and more are going to be extended mm -hmm. and then extended in a way that, you know, so is Olivero going to be the chose the first version theme? Yeah. Um, so there has been, I don't, so like we talked about it, but I don't know if we've decided there was a conversation around uh, standardizing on gin and uh, we've empowered Christina. Uh, with the UX elite on the leadership team to really drive that decision uh, from a UX point of view. So I, I don't think Christina is on the call. Um, I'm more talk talking about the front end theme. Oh, the front end, the, sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Um, yeah, sorry. Not, I, can, that, not I can talk a little bit about that if you want. Yeah, I've not been part of any of those conversations myself. So if you have. But, like I can tell you that uh, Christina... Um, Matteo, Pierre uh, from UI Components and I have been discussing uh, like the ability to integrate in um, like external SDC libraries that, and, and this is something like a recipe might provide through a module or something like that into a theme. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's going to come down to like design tokens, which are moved into like CSS variables. So we're we've been in the process of kind of like standardized on naming, you know, because like, like, let's say we want like a primary background color, primary, you know, foreground color, primary text color. We need to make sure number one, those are accessible. So we need to have the themes define those in a standardized way. So when you're defining like the styles within a, within an SDC, you know what to type and then it'll just automatically inherit that. Uh, Which is that a single directory component, SDC, for correct. those who don't know. Yeah, correct. It's still very early in that process, by the way. So there is no track for that yet. I don't if I understand it correctly. <laughs> yeah. There is not. No, what we did create is a um, UX working group that Christina uh, created. Um, has some of the people that um, that were just mentioned on it, um, and it, they have a list of questions that they're sorting through. Uh, they're not just looking at that question, but also like what is the user flow of the installer, et cetera, et cetera. Because some of these things, they span across tracks. So I would say um, I will pass this on to Christina, and I think she should probably think about how we might want to make those decisions. I mean, it sounds like there's already active conversations. Um, yeah, there's a, a question that came to Q&A. Um, about it, you know, is there a version of the prototype that just that doesn't have demo content and things right now? I think that's the case. The one that is linked on the um, Starshot page has sort of the minimal start to the prototype. So I'll drop that link in in the Q and A text. Yeah, we want to uh, streamline that as well by DrupalCon. So like, we want to create a Git repo uh, for all these things and documentation. Um, we're a little bit blocked right now on creating the Git repo and, and launching all of that because we want to figure out the final name of Starshot. And so we're actually doing um, user research and testing on like which name should we go with. And once we have the name, we can create uh, the Git repo as well and 
that will be um you know where people where people can check out and add to and those kinds of things. Uh, Kristen, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm just curious on, and maybe this was part of the form. I did take a look at the form just for curiosity, but um, maybe speak to your process of what are you what are you looking for? How are you doing the evaluation process? You know, someone mm -hmm. throws their hand up, like maybe talk through, you know, how you're going to evaluate that person or their plan or or how much information are they expected to provide when they're we're when they're offering to lead a track. Yeah. So we ask in the forum, um, we ask first of all which track people are um, you know, volunteering to lead. Um, and we ask um what experience they have in that area. So like maybe around event management, like what's we have a background for it. If you don't think if you've been contributing to these modules, um, maybe you're the maintainers of these modules, I don't know. And then we also ask the question, what's your vision? You know, like if you think about, let's say, SEO, like, or you want to have an SEO recipe, what is your vision for it? And so, like, we'll look at sort of their experience, their vision. Then we also ask um, questions like, how much time are you able to contribute? And are you able to contribute it? Because we have this ambition to launch Starshot relatively quickly, right? We also ask, like, can you actually work on it the next, um, you know, sort of two, three, four, five, six months? So we're going to look at availability, experience, vision. Um, yeah, those are kind of the, the things. Um, we have... Um, we have no like more formal uh, evaluation process right now. Um, we have we're, we're probably going to develop that to be honest. <laughs> um, and we have time set up as a team to. Sorry, I'm getting a sp spam spam phone call. Um, yeah, so we we have time set aside as a team to go through all of the applications together. So we'll talk through each of them, and I'm sure we will. Um, you know, make notes and. Um, try to do the matching. If only one person applies for a track, then that person might be the likely uh, candidate to lead it um, if we believe the person is qualified. Um, so yeah, we'll see, I think, depending on the volume and um, the people that apply. But we're going to go to each of them individually um, and, and discuss that as a team. Cool. And I guess a quick follow-up, if you don't get any hands raised for a track, what, what's the plan? And, yeah. Then the track probably stays open for a little longer. Um, as I said, like we're not done creating all the tracks. There will be more new tracks as well. Um, and I think for, for Barcelona, like, which is our immediate next milestone, which is in 60 days, I think, um, you know, we want to have multiple recipes ready, or at least in um, maybe not like a final version, but like we want to be, we, we want to demonstrate an installation process where a user can try a Drupal star shots and select some recipes as part of the installer. And uh, it's okay if not all the tracks are ready or if not all the tracks are being worked on yet. Like we just want there to be, you know, a number of tracks that, that people can test and play with and that we can uh, demonstrate on stage. So, and I think that's quite okay. I mean, Starshot, like we want to get to the first version uh, in eight months and uh, Barcelona will be the midway point, actually. We'll be kind of four months into it. Um, but we're not done, you know, with the first version of Starshot when we release V1. So we'll... I imagine we'll add more tracks um, over the next years, probably, and have community track uh, recipes and all of these things. Uh, we have identified things that are in the critical path, um, like, for example, what is um, the backend theme and the frontend theme, and uh, you know those, and like the installer is in the critical path, and uh, some of these things we can resource. Um, from um, certified partners that have raised their hands. 
for example, Acquia is committing to some of the things in the critical path. So I think like there's critical path things that we definitely want to prioritize and find resources for. And then some of the tracks are maybe more like um, should have versus must have or nice to have even. Uh, and those can come a little bit later as well. Uh, Batty asks, where can we find the information on the critical path? Um, I don't think we have published these things yet. It's a good example of things we have to share. Um, but it's like things like the, and like some of it is we're putting in a base uh, recipe, we call it. I think that might be an issue. There might be an issue for that. So some things might be documented, but probably not all of the things. And the base recipe would basically have the things like the front end theme or the back end theme and you know, maybe token module or whatever, you know, things that we feel like a lot of recipes might need. Um, so I think there's an issue for that where you can, um, yeah, can, I don't know how much there is on the issue right now, but that's how we're thinking about it. And that's how we uh, have been discussing it. So maybe the thing, the way I feel about it is like, we're kind of been assembling a plane <laughs> And we're taking off with the plane, but we haven't quite reached uh, cruising altitude yet. Um, and so that means that we haven't communicated all the things and we're still figuring out things. So it's very much still um, a lot of work has been done, but it's still things in process as well. And hopefully we'll reach cruising altitude, so to speak, by, uh, by uh, DrupalCon Barcelona, where it will become very clear how people can contribute and key decisions we've made and that kind of stuff. And by the way, we've also worked with the DrupalCon Barcelona team to organize a Starshot track, which is pretty exciting. So there will be many sessions on Starshot and deep dives on aspects of Starshot. So it's really designed to help uh, you know, create a lot of um, alignment and uh, collaboration in person in Barcelona as well. So make sure to come to Barcelona if you have the means and the time. Chris, there are some questions in the Q and A. Oh, okay, let me uh, check. Um, I have not been paying attention, so I'll go there now. Yeah, can a person apply for more than one track or does a previous submission get overridden if another submission is made by the same person? I can definitely apply for more than one, I think, yeah. Um, sorry, Gabor, I didn't mean to. I can like get that copy of the submission to keep as a reference. I think that should be possible. Yeah. Also, if it's not possible, that. email Gabor. <laughs> <laughs> Gabor has been in charge of the form. So I'll dig it out. All right. Catherine asks a question. I haven't read it. Let me read it. Is the marketing track the right place to discuss the branding messages for effective outreach to non-Drupal web dev community? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, definitely work with the marketing and Suzanne in spe uh, specifically, she's building a, a team of people that are helping. Um, several people beyond Suzanne are actively involved, but uh, they're actively working on. So like we worked on the strategy, we're validating the strategy. I'm talking to marketers and site builders to test our strategy right now. And uh, Suzanne has taken the strategy and um, extracted sort of key messaging and positioning uh, fr from that. And they're working on flushing that out and evolving that as well. So if you want to help with messaging and branding, uh, please do get involved with Suzanne. And if it's not clear where you have to get involved, uh, e email me, I would say, and we'll like that, that, probably, that just means, and we haven't been clear enough how people can get involved with these things. Um, and then Jim, get to see you, Jim, um, asks, um, in the initial wireframe from the first page of the Drupal CMS installer, the user is presented a choice between blank canvas corporate site magazine and more. Um, will the singular theme and SDCs be enough to handle the different site templates? I, I don't know. And in fact, um, you know, we want to prioritize a selection of recipes. And what you are referring to is a step before people select recipes. So first you could 
select the style of website that you want, like corporate site, magazine site, and then you go selecting recipes on top of that. Uh, we've actually said selecting the style of website is not necessarily MVP. We would like to have it, but we want to prioritize being able to select recipes for Barcelona. Uh, and selecting the style of website is um, kind of a nice to have right now. I don't know, to be honest, if it, if a single theme and SDCs are enough. I, I imagine uh, it would be preferred to have different themes because I can imagine different styles or different types of websites having different vibes, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe having multiple themes would be nicer. But um, yeah, I think that's not MVP stuff. Good. Yeah, I was just trying to think how, I mean, you could have a site recipe that could install different themes too. True. But yeah, yeah. I didn't know how CSS Zen Garden we needed to get yeah. on that one theme. Yeah, I think it would definitely something, we definitely want to, I think we have a big gap of, for example, if you think about WordPress and others, they have so many themes available, right? In a, their marketplace between quotes. And it's always been a, a limitation that Drupal has in my mind, where we have limited amount of themes available. And I do think um, there might be an opportunity to have, um, you know, more themes available out of the box or customizable themes, that kind of stuff. But um, I think it's very interesting. It's not something that we have really dug into that much, to be quite honest. Great. Yeah. Other thoughts or questions? How many of you have applied? Maybe raise your hands. Nice. How many of you are thinking of applying, but have not applied yet? Well, can see some people, yeah. There we go. Awesome. Um, if you have more questions, like we're kind of at time. Um, but if you have more questions, you can always email me and I will promise I will get back to you. Uh, just Dries at uh, batash.net. You can go to my site and if you go to my about page, you will see my email address listed there. Um, I think Dries at drupal.org works as well, but um, there's a question. Let's see, do we have a track? to add inventory for view modes or inventory for media assets. Um, we don't, but we do have a media management track. And maybe that, maybe you're describing it, what you're describing is a little bit different, our job. The way we're thinking about the tracks right now is we're trying to use um, sort of higher level concepts that end users like that are that means something in the in the minds of a maybe somebody that doesn't know Drupal works in a marketing organization. So things like an SEO capability or, um, you know, a, a media manager. So like when you say an in inventory of view modes, like how do we translate that to language or a capability that people might um, know from other CMSs or like an inventory for media assets to me sounds like media management capability. I could elaborate on the, on the question. Yeah, you, yeah, go ahead. Yes, it's, uh, for example, when a site builder start uh, working on the site, they usually want to add a content type, mostly like that. Then mm -hmm. the next step is the view modes. I want the, only in Drupal we do have two standard, the full content and the teaser, mm -hmm. no more. But we do have uh, so many types for cards. We have like horizontal cards, horizontal oh, cards, vertical cards. And I think in Acquia CMS, they call them impressed card, featured cards. So all these, uh, they are the first thing which mm -hmm. will people will touch in when they are building or trying to use the CMS. There, so yeah. there's components that are being defined. Um, so, ha, you know, being able to use Experience Builder with a component, um, maybe 
yeah, I guess maybe the there's a lot of people working on components for experience builder and maybe more generally. I was going to say the same as uh, Kristen, like some of this could be a media management recipe poss possibly, but the other part is like, it sounds like you're describing potentially components that are, could be part of the experience builder as well, or SDCs. Um, but maybe, um, I don't know if Mike Herschel knows more about it. He might have additional color. Um, yeah. If not, I would ask it in the Slack and see. Um, but, you know, Laurie might have some thoughts on that as well. Very right, good. Thanks for applying, Bevan, I think it is pronounced. Um, Um, all right, we're six minutes over. I do have to run. Um, it was just a quick call to answer some of these questions. If you want more time, I'm happy to do another one of those next week. Would you like another 30 minute call next week? Seems like it's useful because um, we ran out of time. So I'll uh, I'll work on setting that up. Um, so, all right. Well, thank you for your interest. Thank you for uh, applying. Thank you for considering to apply. Uh, we hope that you do. Um, feel free to tell your friends, colleagues, even family um, about this. And uh, hopefully we can get more people excited about uh, Starshot. And uh, let's all work together on getting some, hitting some real milestones by Barcelona, which is uh, coming up very quickly. So. All righty. Thank you, everybody. Cool. Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.